Okay, great. So I'm president of 44 Walker Street Owners Corporation. This is a photo of 44 Walker Street. Um, it's the brownstone building with the green, uh, the first floor is green. Um, oh boy, I'm sorry, bear with me because I've never done this before. 44 Walker fine. Street is located between Church and Broadway in the Tribeca East Landmarks District. The building was built in 1855 and 44 Walker Street has been a co-op since 1993 and I've actually lived there 27 years. I've been there since 1994. When I moved in around the time the photo on the left was taken, the facade was in disrepair. The brownstone was crumbling, the fire escape was rotting, the first floor was painted baby blue, the metal doors were an eyesore, and the display window was boarded up. In 2003, we performed major restoration work on the facade. We repaired all of the brownstone, we painted the fire escape, we replaced the metal and glass doors on the first floor with new metal and glass doors, and painted the first floor green. We did this on our own accord, spending tens of thousands of dollars because we were proud of our historic building and wanted to restore and beautify it. Here on the right, you can see what it looked like after the restoration. Uh, these photos show Walker Street, east and west, um, just for context of the block and what the building looks like today. And for more context here, you can see other examples of streetscapes in Tribeca East. And as you can see, there is quite a variety of infill. The facade of 44 Walker Street evolved and developed over the years. The image on the left shows 44 Walker as it looked historically in the 1940s. Much of the infill was modified by the time the building was designated a landmark in 1992, including a door being installed where the second display window was. So the photo on the right is what it looked like when it was designated in 1992. The restoration work the co-op did was performed in 2003 and we thought everything was fine until a refinancing just last year turned up an outstanding landmarks violation from 2004, which we were unaware of. We learned that the 2003 replacement of the two Western doors were unpermitted. Only the replacement of the Eastern door was permitted. I was living in the building and helped to oversee the restoration. We hired an expediter and architect to get the work permits and approval from landmarks. From the beginning, it was always our intention to replace all three doors. But in the landmarks permit, only the easternmost door is mentioned and approved. As you can see in our architect's drawing, the note in the bottom right is unclear. Our architect states that we were going to match the eastern bay to the western bays, as well as legalize the western bays. As our intention was always to replace all three doors for continuity, we thought we had permission to replace the western bays as well, especially because we were simply replacing the glass and metal doors with nearly identical glass and metal doors. In any case, we carefully selected the Western doors to match the Eastern door and took care to match the transoms as well. The restoration we did was in keeping with the historic feeling of the building and the neighborhood and certainly a vast improvement over what was there before. The image was taken, this image was taken in 2004, around the time the violation was issued and before the first floor was painted. Despite these changes, we maintained the integrity of the original facade and retained as many design details as possible. We didn't make any modifications to the cast iron, for example. The changes we made to the Western Bays were done specifically to match the approved Eastern Bay, so the facade would look seamless and consistent. These are close-up photos of how 44 Walker Street appears today. 
As you can see, the quality of the materials we used have held up remarkably well. These are some more close-up photos. Um, the first floor has paper in their windows. It was just a temporary protective measure and it will be removed. I've canvassed Tribeca East and found many other buildings with similar restoration work and infill. Here are some examples of infill that Landmarks has approved in past public hearings. 58 White Street has similar metal infill and 63 Lespinard has similar transom and framing details as 44 Walker. Despite the fact that ours wasn't approved, I believe our work is actually superior. Here are some other examples of infill that were approved in the past. 269 Church Street was approved at LPC staff level and 35 Walker, which is directly across the street, has infill that was approved at a public hearing. Again, ours is actually superior work. I believe the restoration work we did is consistent with many other neighborhood buildings that have gotten approval, and we think you should approve the installation of our infill as well. Thank you so much for your time. I'm on a call. Did I do okay? <laughs> you did terrific. Uh, I want to say that was one of the best legalization presentations I've ever seen in the hundred years I've been doing this, uh, well, that... even by myself. So for someone who's not in the business, that's terrific. Well, that is um, wild flattering and I appreciate okay. that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, now, you know, um, I'd love to have you put back the picture of the designation photo. That's a good one to show everybody again. And then um, I'm going to let, we'll go around and see how everybody feels about if the work does, is in the spirit of that drawing that you put up. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and that, the, you know, and if anyone believes that it sounds like there was a, you know, a lot of care in, in this project, but somehow you guys missed your cues with LPC. Uh, so show us the designation photo and then whoever wants to go next, uh, and kind of say if they think that we can vote, uh, up a, a, um, resolution that is in favor of this legalization. Bruce here. Can someone show me where the raised hand feature is on the webinar? I, I know where it is on zoom. I'd like to raise my hand, but I have no idea where that feature is here. Well, Bruce, you go next then. So you're number one. Okay, but in future, I do need to know. That I'll look while you're doing that. Okay. I'll look for you. Okay, All I want to say. Oh, actually, yeah. Jason, it's me showing the presentation, and you need to tell me, or the, or the young lady needs to tell me which actual page she wants me to oh, show. Okay, you. so I think go down, and Bruce, go while you go down. I'll tell you. Right. What, so, uh, so what I want, what I want to say is, uh, I'm in uh, a small co-op with 11 shareholders uh, since 1988. So there's That's the slide, stop. There's, stop, you're going to, there. So there's a similarity. I, I understand what one has to go through. I will say that we had quite an ordeal with LPC when we did our restoration work, but we got through the process and everything that we did, which was extensive, was approved. So I, First of all, I'm 100% in favor of what they did, and I'm not going to challenge it. And I think we should write a simple re resolution in favor of the of this of the legalization. I'm just noting as a footnote that while the presentation was wonderful, especially since it wasn't a lawyer or an architect, it's clear that they did not go to LP. There was no ambiguity. They just did this work. They went to approval for LPC on the first part of it, but not this part of it. So it's just a footnote. You know, you, you just have to get approval from LPC for anything that you do outside. Okay, thanks. Vicki, somebody, please. Or that's it, that's all the discussion we have? I say go for it. Okay, go for it. 
Yes, that's right. It's unfortunate that, you know, it's um, post construction approval. We like to follow rules. There are rules for a reason. And uh, luckily for the building that uh, they did a reasonably good job. Otherwise, we would have issues here. So the lesson is do follow the law when you have to, but I guess it's okay. I, I would say the same thing. I uh, pulled the uh, current version up on um, Google Maps, by the way, and uh, I just want to say that what didn't come through in the um, the other the photos that were presented tonight is that the large uh, window uh, actually has a mullion in the in in the center, and I, I don't. I, it appears like it might be four lights. I can't, I can't really tell, but it it still looks very good. All right, so I'm going to say, do I, can we close this and vote for an approval, a, a simple uh, approval resolution to legalize? Yes. Yes. Okay. So second, someone second that? Second. second. Yeah. Jay, can you hear me? We hear you. Jason? Yes. Vicky? Vicky, yes. Susan? Susan, yes. Bruce. Bruce, yes. Gerard. Uh, Forsberg, yes. Elizabeth. Elizabeth, yes. Megan. Megan, yes. Vera. Vera, yes. Is Chalia? Okay, he's not here. And Roger. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. It passes. Okay, so who's next? Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Really Thank appreciate you. it. Next is 47 VZ. Uh, 47 VC. Vestry. 47 <laughs> Vestry. Another yes. street in Tribeca. Good evening. Uh, my name is Taylor James Pierce. I'm an architect, but I, after 44 Walker, I think I'm going to hire her to do all my presentations going forward. Uh, <laughs> Um, so I was, uh, I'm an architect, uh, and, um, we have a, I have a project, uh, one of the representatives from the building, Mr. Jan Peterson is here, uh, and he will chime in or, or he will respond to questions. Should you have them? Um, and, oh, someone is sharing that already. Uh, do you want to continue with it? And, and. I will. Should I have it if you want to show it. It's up to you. Let me know. I can. Uh, I can. Sh I can share it. Uh, okay, uh, then let me know. It myself. might work a little easier if I share. So. Um, Go in it. Okay. Thank you so much. Is that Lucy. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Can everyone see this? Yes. Okay, so uh, um, I was contacted by uh, 47 Vestry to uh, address the issue that is. Um, issues really uh, a few issues uh there's the exterior ridge beam at 47 vestry uh was damaged and it's uh it's in dire need of repair and behind it is a glazed um covering so copper and glass covering above the entry and um so i was tasked with uh, with finding uh, a way to fix uh, uh to replace the beam and to uh replace the copper and the glass covering um so the building itself uh was made uh was built in 1915 and it was designated in uh north for north tribeca in 1992 these are the uh designation photographs and as you can see um he, when it was designated and uh, throughout Tribeca, a lot of the buildings um, were of a certain um, function that didn't require or didn't desire uh, a light through there. And throughout the years, many of the buildings uh, throughout Tribeca, uh, both Tribeca North and others, um, people have been doing various things to make it uh, more light for uh, residences and make it more uh, uh, reflect a more residential feel. Um, so that being said, uh, 47 Vestry uh, no longer has the the um, corrugated metal across the top, as you see with a lot of the awnings throughout Tribeca. 
that's wide open and these are wood joists. Um, in 2000, they, uh, they covered the, uh, the entrance uh, with copper and glass. And over time, the copper has uh, been uh, uh, up and the glass is cracked and it's leaking and so they want to replace it. We went back and tried to find and it was, uh, the landmarks application and approval for the work and we were not able to find it and neither was the landmarks. And so while the building has done um, lots of work and gone before landmarks and, and crossed their T's and dotted their I's, they did this particular bit of work that they have done at the building, did not go to landmarks and was not approved. And so now we're at the point where we would like to and need to replace, we need to and we'll, uh, replace the beam. This is a must and would like to uh, replace the, the glass and the copper cover that's over the entry only. Everything else is open. Um, and we would like to match the materials. Um, our, our, we are proposing, here's, here's some images of the damage that you can see that must be must take place. Um, there's broken glass. Can everyone see that as well? Yes. Okay. Uh, the joists supporting the, the, the copper and glass are split and need work as well. Um, the copper, I'm, not, I'm sorry, not the copper, the cast iron, is uh, starting to rest along the top of the, the skyward face, which is not uncommon after, uh, it's a 1915 building, so over a hundred years, cast iron needs some protection. Um, thankfully, it does not need any um, actual repairs. It just needs additional protection. Um, so in essence, um, we are requesting to go back in with traditional uh, copper putty bars and putty bar covers. Um, it will be laminated safety glass, and um, uh, there's a request that it goes to wire safety glass. And all the paint, we're going to repaint, we propose to repaint the entire uh, wood framing of the awning. And uh, we would be using Sherwood Forest, uh, Benjamin Moore uh, exterior paint, 100% um, acrylic. Um, and as, uh, if you, Hopefully this switches well. Can everyone see this? A switch for everyone? I see it. I see a, a decrepit uh, canopy and then the frontal picture. Okay, good. So so I, I'm gonna, and now you can see the map, right? Of, uh, of uh, Tribeca North? Correct. Correct, okay. So uh, A is 47 Vestry. B is its sister building, which is uh, at 141. Uh, vestry. Um, late, e is Late Street, and then down here D is uh, 129 Hudson Street. And so I would like to show that uh, 47 Vestry is not unique in its uh, approach to allowing more light to the first floor and to the to the public and to expo uh, to show and allow people to see uh, um, the beautiful facade as they're walking down the street. Um, so this, these are pictures of um, 47 Vestry, and you can see that the, the glass is uh, translucent, but it's you know it's, it's uh, fog because of silt and organic debris, and um, uh, you can't see the cracks in it, but there are there are cracks in there. Um, you can see that the the beam itself is damaged and needs to replace. We we are proposing to replace it. Uh, to the first section, its entire length, to the first section, matching all dimensions. Um, and as, as an approach or as a, a to treating the, the awnings, its sister building to the east is one is 41 Vestry. And they've done the same. They've re rebuilt the all the wood in steel. So they've um, so their design is maintained the design. Uh, the original design, but in steel, and they have uh, a cover, uh, a glass cover above their awning. Um, this is, uh, I want to move to 129 Hudson Street, and this is a landmark approved 
it's in a separate district. It's on West in the Tribeca West district. It was approved by landmark uh, approval of landmarks, and it has uh, it's changed from corrugated metal to a, um, a translucent panel uh, uh, above framing of the awning, and um, and then this is 44 Lake Street, which is not a suspended uh, awning. This is a bracketed on, awning. Um, but they as well worked with landmarks and they got approval to have a uh, what a, uh, is like a um, more of a PVC. It's a, a, a plasticized. Uh, it's a plastic um, uh, canopy uh, that's, that's translucent. So it's um, so it again allows light, but that's a, a corrugated material across the top there. Um, and I'm sorry. Uh, uh, glass is what I'm trying to say. Um, and so those are examples of neighboring uh, approved buildings. And so uh, just so you know, we are, our plan is to uh, match the materials that are there, uh, which are traditional materials and traditional applications of a, of a uh, copper and glass skylight. Um, and apply it across the the top above the entry, and uh, we're looking for your approval on this submission. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. So, is this also a legalization? I'm sorry. Is this also a legalization? Is there a violation for this canopy? This no, there's no, there's no, no violation. Okay, just, there's no violation. Never addressed. No, okay. it's just never addressed, and and you know they're quite embarrassed. You know, they actually told me, well, we're almost, we we've always done everything correctly, so okay. we, should have, we should have that record there. And okay, so I think it's pretty good. Um, there are certainly other examples, and um, that's certainly not in good shape. And you've also decided to you know do wood, which is great, and obviously from that period. Uh, so I could, uh, I don't need to be convinced anymore to write a, a approval kind of uh, resolution. So whoever wants to go next. Um, maybe I'll go next. I just have a question. Did you say that you're replacing a part with copper? Uh, the existing, the existing uh, cover. Um, I'm calling it a cover more than a skylight because it, it, it um, but there's a, the whole thing is sky, sky lit as if you will. It's more of a cover made of uh, copper and glass, and it's. Um, no, I know that, but you. It's, it's, it's tradition, you know, traditional materials. Traditional. Uh, it ha uses the same details and profiles that you will see in a in a uh, in copper um, uh, copper work with in association with glass. Uh, no, I asked because you showed a picture of a copper piece, right? Uh, but um, you're proposing copper. You're not proposing natural copper at all. Oh no, no, we are. It's 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 what is copper goes back with copper. Right. So, um, it again. I keep saying this. It's my understanding that unless you purchase pre-finished copper, that reddish color will never go green again. So you have to purchase it uh, so that it's pre-finished. Otherwise, it will stay as a different color. Oh uh, well, um, yeah. We uh, all copper that's uh, all copper shows up bright orange if it's uh, and then within a week uh, or two it goes brown and then and then it really doesn't go green for years and years and years. So, uh, so we're we're letting it do its thing naturally. That's what I'm recommending. Because we don't have acid rain anymore. We don't have that pollution. Copper does not turn into that green again. So you have to purchase it now pre-finished. Says a very fancy consultant my clients paid a lot of money for. Yeah, uh, it's, urine turns it green immediately. So we can do that if you'd like as well. Um, I would like, I'm, I'm going to approve this, but I would like to say that um, we would like you to put in your, res in, in our resolution, we put that any material that is purchased in natural copper, um, you can guarantee it. I'm telling you. you, you need to guarantee us that whatever you install will be in the same color 
And if that requires purchasing copper that is pre-finished to go from, you know, reddish to whatever color you're trying to match here, if it's greenish, then get it pre-finished. You see that, right? That is not going to turn green. We don't uh, have can I... green anymore. And in that case, I will be fine with this. Yeah, the copper that we have up there now is, hi, this is Jan Peterson. I'm with the board of the building and I've been living there for uh, since we uh, re restructured the building. Uh, it's a currently a, a kind of a brownish um, a weathered uh, look to it now. Exactly. Uh, and, and it's uh, and it, it it currently matches the uh, the copper you can see in the front. You can see the you can see a little piece of it in the front of the that uh, flashing that wraps over the wood. Um, so um, it's it's it, John is, is correct. If you look at the existing conditions, uh, this sorry. is uh, if you look at the existing conditions that's there, the um, green that's over the entry that's. That's the runoff. Uh, it will collect from traffic, uh, from birds, from any number of things. The glass will collect um, airborne debris, and it'll put, rush over that that front edge, and it will turn a different color because of the runoff than the copper that's immediately to the west, which is that br more brownish color. If you look at this photograph right here, where see the difference this is the copper that's under the the runoff that's the copper under the brown if you would like us to make sure that the copper that goes back underneath the the runoff section um if you would like that to uh, look more like it looks over time we can do some sort of patina or something so it will Yes, you it's, can give it. It will be hastened. I, I will say, be hastened yes. uh, to uh, to match. I would be very grateful, along with a million other people to live, if you install right from the scratch a a color and material finish that matches as close as it can its neighbors to the left and the right. Yeah. And I think it can be done. So if you can do that. Um, I, I think that's great because installing something that's copper and hoping to God it matches itself in X amount of years is an eyesore. Yeah, there's a wash you can put on it that can actually uh, bring. <laughs> I, I know what you mean, the color down to uh, uh, to more of a natural uh, weathered look. But do it prior to install. Yes. Okay. Do it prior to install. When it comes off the truck, it already looks like that. It's doable. It's possible. It shouldn't be a big thing. Uh, I don't want to increase your budget. Please, miss, you know, please know I'm very sympathetic to that. But if there's a choice, please make it as uh, close to the left and the right as possible. So once it goes in, it's looking harmonious as best as it can. And then over time, it'll have its thing. But I know that copper red does not turn that lovely green or brown. Okay. Okay. Got it. Understood. I appreciate the the input. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Other, so you're gonna cap. use you're gonna use aluminum. No, I'm joking. Okay. Who's next? <laughs> uh, Jason, I'll go next. Um, oh, if that's all right. So. Uh, Taylor, just a couple questions. I, uh, I also, um, this, this is fine. Uh, I think it's great that, you know, what, what you're going back with. So I understand, I just want to make sure I understand. So you're going back with wood. Is this a two by 10 in the front two by 12? Oh, I uh, wish it, I wish it, it's a, um, it's more, it's actually a four by 22, 21. Okay. It's, <laughs> It's a, it is a, we will have to get a engineered glue lamb beam. I, I looked, I truly, I looked into getting a single beam uh, that, and the people were saying, you're crazy. Talk to somebody in Washington state to get a single beam and it'll be five or six months on a truck. And you just hope that it's going to, all we need to do is match the dimensions and and it's it's painted uh if this was all exposed we'd be doomed honestly if this was exposed beautiful wood it would be 
uh, <laughs> it'd be very, very difficult in 2022 to, to match that. Um, but the, all of this has been painted. And so our intention is to go get an engineered piece of lumber that's glue lambed and we will, it will be finished and protected with a, a, a and maintained to match the rest. And, um, so yes, no, I, I, I feel your pain on it'll that. Be I, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. I have a, um, I actually have a, a, a building with a similar, uh, canopy a 95 foot long, uh, suspended canopy like this. And, um, the, the this particular canopy beam was undersized in my building, and I, it took uh, a few back and forth with an engineer, and and we we had to keep uh, within um, ninety five five feet long, and we had to keep it at six inches. And I finally said, "Can we do steel flitch plates in between them?" Um, and and so we engineered it that way, and it worked out very nicely. Uh, so two two other questions though. Then um, the does that mean that the um, uh, the connections that we're seeing here are going to also remain? Uh, will you be able to do through connections like that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Wonderful. Definitely. definitely. I, I, I don't want to change. I, honestly, I don't want to change anything. And uh, since it's paint and and then copper would, uh, you know, uh, copper and glass, it's pretty simple uh, palette, truly. So um, that's uh, it's just the beam that was really difficult. But uh, the brackets that are supported or are suspended from the anchor points on the facade um they seem to be in, in fine condition the contractors that we talked to um say that they definitely can be reused so we are we're not in, we're not anticipating any changes beyond it, it, it's going to look the way it is, looks now just the only difference being truly is that there's a um as the beam is on, behind the, the exterior paint is going to be a, a glue lamp Sure, so I don't have a problem with that. Um, and so then my last question is uh, with the skylight, um, do you have a detail section of that? Is is this, because uh, the skylight that I saw, is it going to be, How's that? Uh, here we go, okay. Uh, thank you, yes. Um, so, we're, so, so is it going to, are these gonna be individuals, is it gonna be a single skylight or are these gonna be, in, it sits on top of the uh, structure or will it go in between the structure or, or, or is the structure changing to receive um, a single skylight? It, it, um, in fact, you know, it's interesting. The, those are interesting questions because it's not really seen from the public. From the underside, you see the joists, the wood joists. You don't right. really, you don't, the only copper you really see are, uh, is at the face as, as Ms. Uh, Cameron, I believe her name was, uh, as Ms. Cameron was uh, uh, mentioning, the, the copper, you, you see the copper along the, the street facade, um, but at the underside, as you're walking through, you really see the, just the wood joists and, and the glazing above. And um, uh, I was trying to uh, save the, the, the co-op some money, and I was trying to, uh, you know, uh, by, by going fewer. There are nine, essentially nine bays, and uh, Oh, no, it's nine feet. I'm sorry, nine feet, and, uh, and essentially six bays. So they're about a, a foot and a half uh, across. So, um, and and so I was trying to save some money and just like uh, bridge a couple of these uh, joists, and just uh, with the copper and and with the with the um, with the glass sizes that we were after, and the the lamination and the uplift and all this, it it just came and then talking to landmarks they're like no we really want you to to match what is there and this is all before we did, found out that it had not been landmarked originally so go and also when i talked to the the fabricators they said just stick with what is there because that works best and it's easiest to in, install and it matches exactly so really we are we are going in with uh, um something that is anchored to the joists below but it really just kind of it floats above. Uh, okay, so it floats above. All right. Yeah, it floats above. So <clears throat> and that is so our and so the work uh, is primarily. I'm sorry, if you, I'm scrolling so I can see you. Might maybe you guys can see everything. Can I um, can I just say something? It's almost like a flat plate uh, that sits on top of the um, uh, skylight. Is kind of a bad word. It's like a flat plate that sits on top of the uh, uh, the joists. 
Um, and as uh, Taylor had mentioned, the the copper uh, that uh, is used to hold the glass together is really not visible, actually, even from the uh, the street level. Right. Okay. This is this is good here. I see. Um, so it it does sit very close to the. Um, I I, I uh, was uh, based off of the uh, sample that you were showing. I was somewhat of the impression that there was a curb around this thing, and it sat up. Um, you know, uh, much like six or seven inches, six or eight inches above. But no, th I see oh, this no. now. That's wonderful. No, no. That's All right. right. That'll be a very nice nice application. Sure. Yep. Thank you. That's it's it's traditional materials in a yep. semi semi uh, you know uh, it's it's traditional materials used in a, a unique way and so uh, yeah it I, I see that it looks like uh, almost like a standing seam um, connection as well so very yeah. very nicely done thank you may I um, I have two questions it's first um, first of all I'm just trying to this is is this directly across the street from Mars Ajme 71 Lake Street? Is this directly across the street? On Vestry? This is on Vestry facing north. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking yeah. it was late. Okay, facing okay. north. So was this building, this was not converted or this was not developed, as it were, by by a, by a developer in, in like uh, early 2000, no, no, late no, 90s. Did. This was an indigenous um, corner building corner resident converted to residential before that, right? Uh, that's something that uh, John can uh, No, to. there was no developer uh, that we did this. We got this building in 1990, I believe it was. Uh-huh. And, um, and we all pooled our money together and, and uh, right. started to rent it. And the building was just uh, a mess. You know, there was uh, right. no windows. There was no, uh, the roof was leaking. Everything was uh, a mess. There was no elevator, et cetera. So we we did this and we worked with John Peachy, uh, right. who's uh, also you probably yes. know uh, in Tribeca. Is there a um? Is there or was there a semi derelict building next right next door? Yeah. Or am I thinking? Yeah. Well, yeah. Actually, next to next to us, which we call the sister building, which is yeah. I, I guess I think the address is thirty seven Vestry, where you yeah. see where they they basically mirrored when they put up their awning or their marquee yeah. they kind of they kind of based it on ours so you can see there's uh, mirrors are the look of ours we actually okay. they reproduced it and their building was uh was put together by a developer um, right okay and, that's the one i'm thinking of yeah yes and they had some problems so they, right. this is where i think carol lived carol de Saram. i think she lived on late um but I could be wrong. Oh, you're right. I'm getting confused. Yeah, you're right. It that is late. That exact block, but on late. So yeah, I, yeah. I just want to say that I've I've passed it oh a million times, and to tell you the truth, uh, I always thought it was a cheap and clever uh, way to deal with keeping a canopy, and uh, the, in a, in a in a no longer industrial uh, usage. And I think what you just presented is perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Jason, are we good with this? I'm okay with it. Yes. Me too. As long as we put that the copper matches when it's installed. Um, on either side, I'm good with this. Okay, so I'll call the question. Uh, we're going to write, I'm going to write a, a nice. Approval resolution. Thank you so much. Second. Uh, uh, thank you, landmarks. Well, they, okay. they're going to vote on it, I think, first. <laughs> okay, Jason. Oh, I guess it's yes. Jason, oh. yes. Vicky. Vicky, yes. Susan. Yes. Bruce. Bruce, yes. Gerald. Gerald, yes. Elizabeth. Elizabeth, yes. Megan. Megan, yes. Sarah, yes. And, and Roger. Hey, motion carries eight nine zero zero. We appreciate your your vote and your in your time tonight. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Okay, Are we the done? Next one is one forty West oh. Broadway. Unless you want further discussion on this.
no. So 140 West Broadway. And is this okay? So 140 West Broadway. Please start with uh, just the stuff that's going to be reviewed at the commission. I don't know what the scope of this is, but you'll tell us when you start. Can everyone hear me? My name is Andrew Thompson. Yes, Andrew. Great. Thank you. Thank you for having me on tonight. I appreciate it. Uh, the scope of the uh, 140 West Broadway, and if uh, Lucy can pull it up, that'd be great. I'd appreciate it. But um, this is to uh, replace and somewhat repair uh, an existing sidewalk uh, at this building. Um, so if, I'm just going to quickly go through the what we did as an existing conditions report so you can see the existing sidewalk with the building. Um, that's the uh, building originally, and that's from 1990, excuse me, 1991. So that's when the building was nice. actually designated. Well, wow. wow. okay, wait, hey. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, I, I gotta tell you again, for the record, I'm a very, very, very big fan of landmarks. Um, and I, I... Who is talking? Not me, but. So, um, Matt Benyon, but somebody can mute him. That would be great. Peters right. was the previous presenter. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, so this building is on West Broadway and Thomas Street. It's in the southwest corner, and as you can see in the uh, plot plan to the right there, the red indicates the area of the sidewalk that we're looking to to uh, yes, renovate. Sir. Okay, and you go to the next plate picture, please. Here's a little bit of information of the building when it was uh, designated back in 1991. Of course, it was built back in 1866. And you saw this picture before. We just reused it and we give a little history about the building as well. The lower portion being used for commercial and the upper portion being used as residential currently. Okay, next. Again, here's some historical pictures that we found. The two the, the two to the left are from 1991. The one to the right is from 1941, which is actually the one picturing this building but the Odeon in the background, now what's called the Odeon in the background. But we caught a little bit of the side preview of the building in this picture as well. Can you move to the next picture? This is a uh, plan showing the existing condition of the building. I may come back to this later, but what you're seeing here is the kind of the pinkish red color is the existing granite stone. The uh, blue color is actually concrete right now. And then the green on the lower right hand corner is the existing loading dock that's on Thomas Street. Um, the thing about uh, the existing loading dock, which you'll see some more pictures for, you'll see number 15 and 16. That's representing two, three skylights that are existing there right now, but in very um, not great condition currently. So, um, and that's going to become part of uh, this presentation is that we're recommending to repair those and put them back to the way they were. Um, okay, you can go then. Oh, and then one other thing I like to note here is if you look at the corner, you're going to see some of the stones next to the concrete are, it's, it gets a little interesting. So it looks like some of the stones broke in the past. And so they just filled it in with concrete and you got kind of a jagged edge there. And if you see note number 14, if you just scroll down just a little bit more. I don't quite see it yet. To the, yeah. So note number 14, you see that these granite stones here all have a slope to them. Okay. And I'll talk about that a little more a little later when we talk about the renovation. Okay. On to the next picture. This is for reference, this, uh, this plan right here, because we're going to show a bunch of photographs. So if you want to go back to it later, you can reference the photographs where we took took them from. So going to the next picture, please. So here you're gonna see the existing corner up close, right at uh, West Broadway and Thomas Street. The other photograph is looking down towards Thomas Street and you can see the concrete on the left and the granite stone on the right. And in the foreground pic part of the picture, you're gonna see the next door, pro next door property and you see the, the concrete there is of a darker color and we have a lighter color next to us. Okay, going on to the next picture. Again, this is the um, to the left where the gentleman is sitting on a nice, beautiful, warm day. Um, you can see that uh, we have the next door neighbor with their concrete. 
and our building's in the background there. And you see the MTEA vaults next to the uh, next to the bench right there. On the right hand side, you see going down Thomas Street, and you can see how we have concrete to the left. You see the um, loading dock in the background, and you see the granite stones going down the pathway here. But if you look, well, we'll get some more details to move forward. Keep going on, please. Next photo. Um, what I'm showing here is there's actually three sets, step, three sets of staircases going up. These are the two that are on West Broadway. And the reason I'm showing you this is because you're going to see different ways that the steps have been done. In my design, I'm going to try to make it one way and, and see and instead of having three different ways. So you see the steps here. You also see some of the up close conditions. Um, you can see that between the granite stone and the concrete over the years, they've come in and filled and patched different areas. So it's a little bit of a mismatch. Our intent is at the end of the day is to clean all this up to have it make look a lot more smoother and cleaner. As well, you see the corner in the lower right hand in the lower right hand corner. Uh, you can see how the concrete doesn't match any other concrete. It was a fill in that happened later on. Probably because the stone cracked at some point. Uh, moving on to the next pictures. Um, here you again, we're going down a, uh, down a Thomas street here. Now you can see some of the conditions of some of the granite stones. They're broken in half. They're chipped. Different things have happened to them over the time over time. Going on to the next picture. Uh, this next set of pictures is the existing loading dock, and to the left is the third step set of stairs with the uh, with the um, diamond plate edge to it. And you see how the diamond diamond plating is going across the front, and the top of its existing is concrete with a little bit of a handrail. You can see right there. Okay, going to the next picture, please. These are the three existing skylights. But one, you can see the other two are covered up with diamond plate, but they are under there. And our intent is to uh, renovate all, renovate all three, or replace them with new and uh, put them back to use again, which goes down to the cellar space. Okay, next pic next picture, please. So this right here is showing you the vault down below. Um, the slab. Uh, for Currently, that, uh, the um, um, so anyway, it was. It, I thought it was. I was a little bit. Someone of, it needs to mute, please. please. Thank you. So uh, you can see the existing uh, conditions down below. The uh, structure. The reason for this project is that the structure down below is starting to rust and decay, and so we have a safety issue. We've actually put. Uh, Secondary um, supports in there to make sure that the, uh, the existing slabs stay up. So at the end of the day, uh, our intended goal is to, to fix this so we make the sidewalk safe once again. Um, so that's just showing some of the existing conditions down below. Um, okay, now the next set drawing, if you go to that, this is what our proposed, what we are intending to do with the renovation of the sidewalk. So if you go to the next picture, please. So just like the first one, the second one here shows the existing granite stones that we'll be lifting them up and putting them back in place. And you see the concrete, so we're going to be repouring brand new concrete where it is existing as well. Um, the difference here is you see at the corner, we're trying to create an ADA corner now with a tactile element to it and so forth. And down to the right, you're going to see kind of a purple color along Thomas Street. So the stones along there, we're going to put a curb in. And the intent there is to match the uh, stone, uh, the granite stone that's next door to us, which was also replaced. Uh, I'm not sure the exact date, but it seems like recently, which I'll show you some pictures. Okay, go to the next slide, please. So here um, is the existing concrete next door and then you and to the right is our concrete so you see the difference in color so our intent is to match the concrete color to the to the retail to the building next door so it'll be consistent all the way through and um this is davis colors dark gray number 8084 is the color that we're, we're going to match 
So we try to bring a little more consistency between the two buildings. Okay, moving on to the next picture. Here are our three uh, concrete steps as they currently are. Um, our intent in designing is that we want them all to match and be the same. So we're gonna make them concrete with that new Davis color. And we're gonna add on each one the, um, the diamond plate edge that you see at the loading dock location. So now we'll keep it all consistent between all three of them. Okay, you can go to the next slide, please. So what we're showing here is how we propose uh, make creating uh, the new ADA compliant code corner. And what we've shown here is the other corners just adjacent to this property. So right across the street at 160 West Broadway, at 71 Broad Thomas, and then at 145 uh, West Broadway, which is where the uh, restaurant Odeon is. So this is what we're intending to do here. Uh, to the next slide, please. Here at the loading dock, we're gonna uh, reclad the entire face of it and um, with diamond plate. We're gonna put down a new concrete topping on it. We're going to repair or replace the existing skylights with the Coke bottle um, glass in it. And then if you look in the lower right hand corner, you'll see our next door neighbor and you'll see the granite and also the diamond plate with the handrail. So we're also going to include a handrail all the way across this to match our next door neighbor, basically. So it's going to look more consistent as you walk down the street. That's our intent. Okay, on to the next slide. This is just a, uh, a simple detail on how we're going to construct this. We do have a, a structural engineer on board as well. So he's working with me on this. Um, on to the next slide showing the overall detail of how we're going to do the, the granite, the granite curb, and the concrete. Um, and moving on to the next slide, um, I'm also showing here 55 Hudson Street, how you have the concrete to the left and you have the granite slab to the right. And also right on the corner from us, this is at 90 uh, Hudson Street, a uh, similar concept to what we want to do too with the uh, tactile surface for ADA compliance. Okay. Oh, do I have one more? I think I have one more. Oh yeah, I do. And uh, 7 Harris Street, uh, again, concrete with the, uh, with the granite slab and 180 West Broadway uh, nearby as well. Similar situation, we're just uh, giving you examples of other locations near us. Um, any questions? Well, I'm um, going to let this up here. Right. Chair Friedman uh, is going to talk. And uh, I'm going to start by saying this is an extremely complicated project, which very few of us, I feel like, on in our positions are even, you know, so knowledgeable to actually get this project done right, you know, like in the details of it. Um, can, can, is there a way that you can bring up an overall, that overall plan again and point to some of the sec sections? Did I lose you guys? Yeah, just tell me what, tell me. Oh, which like the plan that has all the colors that shows there's a plan that like, yeah, like think that plan, I feel like that plan the one with the colors that uh, that shows the whole corner, not that. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, down. keep going down, keep going down, and we'll yeah. keep going down and keep going down a little more. There, there we go. That's, 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 that's it, Jason. That's, that's existing. All right. That's so, the existing. No, no, no. no okay. Is there a proposed okay. version of that? Yes. So keep going down through the presentation. No, I think, Jason, what what we need is the existing, the existing proposed. proposed. I know that's yeah. true. That's hard. We don't have that, right? In a way. Well, well actually, let, Jason. Jason, the problem is that unfortunately they're repeating the same thing that is existing, but in their proposed drawing, they changed this to lavender on the bottom, which is too bad. Yeah. That pinkish color, you should have done that around the edge. Because you're not. So, really what's happening to the existing yeah. granite that's now uh, purple on the new proposed? Where's, where's that stone gone? So we are removing that, and the 
situation behind that is the sidewalk gets very narrow there and it becomes a slipping hazard in, in the winter in wet conditions. So we're trying to put a curb yeah, back that's in. Part of, that's, that's part of the historic district. I mean, that's, you know, the, those sloping granite stones are a reflection of the historic district. Yeah. And, and, um, and so, where, what are you proposing to do with them? We, I don't have anything proposed to do with them right currently. But Roger, well, you said you're putting in a curb. You said you were yeah. cutting and putting in the curb. Yes. We're going to match what they did next door. Yeah. So you do have a proposal. No, but they're, they're throwing away the stone. They're throwing away that absolutely this important granite stone. That's ridiculous. But they're putting <clears throat> absolutely new, Roger. But they're putting new granite in lavender, right? Yeah, but that's not, you know, that's not the same, Vicky. Oh, okay. So, I just... Vicky, this is incredible. This is this is such a pimpimento of Lower Manhattan. It right. exists almost nowhere else, including so. These are original, huge industrial concrete slabs that slope down to the roadbed that was designed that way to last a thousand mm -hmm. years, so that <clears throat> trucks could load and unload in that in those buildings where all those bays were. Yeah, Bruce is right to say we have toiled over this for 20 odd years. The notion of ripping this stuff up and throwing it away is right. just unconscionable. That's the question. Yeah, I'm going to just step in here and, and can you show us, sir, by with Lucy, a slide that shows this special curb detail so Vicky can see it or any, everyone can see it, which is where the granite slopes right into gently into the roadbed. And then, uh, you know, I'm just going to say. Uh, echo what the guy said about the granite. I mean, there's no approval out there from us that doesn't it, 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 that isn't a proposal that that you know reuses all the granite slabs. You are doing so much work here. I can't imagine why you wouldn't. You, it, it would even cost any more money to just make sure that you put new structure in uh, where the granite slabs are and put them right back where they were. Um, so. Exactly. So that's it, Jason. I mean, that's it. There's, 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 there's you have it right there. I mean, we can't take away yeah, that. That's it. We don't have to. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So call the question. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to say that the granite step on the second set of steps. Why wouldn't you leave that beautiful granite step? There's no reason. You, everything doesn't have to match. That's the beauty of a historic district. Everything shouldn't match. This is so organic. This block. I walk down every every day. I walk down it today. Beverly Peppers, the great sculptor's studio, was next door, and some of the things you're discussing. That block, Sixty Hudson, is directly across the street. It's the most shocking block. It's a little old-fashioned, 18th, 19th century narrow block, and on one side it is gorgeous, unbelievable how it lasted this long. And you're right; it's hard to walk in the winter because of those slabs. But that's too bad. You can walk there. It's in. Incredibly varied south side. On the north side, you have the monolith of 60, uh, 60 Hudson Street, the Western Union Building. Boy, I would I would do what you need to do, like ADA compliant uh, corners, leave the granite and just live with it. It doesn't have to match any other sidewalks. Uh, repair it. You showed you showed Hudson Street, but you didn't go a block north, which when the city was completely do it, redoing Hudson Street about ten years ago, they filled in the, the, the sloping, they didn't even put curbs in there because they respected, this is a city, they respected that gorgeous granite and they used filler where it was completely broken, like you showed. And it still slopes down to the road that even though it's Hudson Street and even though the city completely re reconstructed it. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm done with my, with my, uh, yeah, and, and Thomas Street is a quiet street. It's not as if, if if on a snowy day or black ice day, you can't walk along the side of Thomas Street. We're not talking about Fifth Avenue here. But I have a question. I need a clarification from the architect. Um, the granite that is Mark number five, you're going to replace it, you're proposing to replace existing granite, which is probably what two, three inches thick with new granite. What is the nature of that new granite? Mm -hmm. like, the rationale behind this 
if you go down a few more pictures, do you mind? I apologize for the noise, which is illegal demolition going on on my block. Yeah, I, I got it too, That's Vicky. It. <laughs> illegal it. after hours construction, actually. <laughs> go back, go back up a little bit. One more. Okay, no, yeah, right there. So this picture here in the lower right hand corner is where this concept comes about with the owner's concern. He's had people slip and fall. No, we know like, that, but what is number eight? Is it like the new granite slabs that are like, I don't know, one inch thick and then they crack all over? Are you proposing to give us a, let's say for the moment, you want to take away the old ones. What are you giving us in return? How thick is that stone? I, I imagine it's going to be a four inch granite slab to match exactly what's next door there. We don't Vicky, Vicky, this this is this is what Roger and uh and, and Bruce were just were just discussing and we don't we don't want to take them up at all. We want to keep what's existing. I know, but first of all, let's understand that if you replace an old granite uh with the new granite which is much much thinner and it cracks over time that's an issue a separate issue is that for whatever reason he's saying i'm going to replace the old granite which is you know this thick with the same thing then we can debate that separately but if this thick granite is replaced with this then that's a definite no right no I'm, no that's not the intent but I, I don't think there's a debate here with it because the, the idea is to keep the existing granite. No, but that's a separate issue because if you replace it with something this thick, it will live the same way, right? Because right. uh, it won't crack. Um, and where in your specification do you say that the new proposed granite is this thick to match the existing? Then we're going to ask you, why the hell are you replacing the existing with the new that's the same. That's our next question. But it's very important for, for you to tell us what is the thickness of the new granite? What I'm hearing from the board is that that's a no-go anyhow, if I'm not mistaken, from the community board. Well, no, we can discuss it first. Oh, yeah, thank you. I, I have um, additional questions that I, I've had my hand up. Um, so it, it, this may not be specifically landmarks, but if we could go back to the curb cut. Um, so right now it appears that you're showing a single curb cut. Is this going to first? My first question is this: Is this going to have to go before DOT for approval? Um, I don't know. To be honest with you, I'm just doing the landmarks community board right now. Yeah, but okay. that's separate later on. Uh, okay, so uh, with the curb ramp, um, right now you're showing one at the. At, uh, can we? Can somebody scroll back to the uh, maybe the plan? Jerry, we're sticking to landmarks, right? Like what he has to do is his problem. Andrew, just tell me which slide I you want me. You to want go me to go to the number. Um, do you want to go down to where we did a little bit of a three D image of it? Uh, <laughs> whichever, so. even the plan is fine. Um, and my my only question here is uh, where where does the single curb cut or excuse me the single handicap ramp at the corner come from? Actually, I would rather have the plan because the um, as I'm looking at the this is a four corners as opposed to what's happening at uh, I believe it's ninety Hudson, um, and so if I'm not mistaken, you know uh, the way the way this is designed currently, you're going to be putting somebody who is in a uh, not so much a wheelchair, but but somebody who's blind, you're going to be directing them directly towards the center of uh, the square. I don't think okay. that's yeah. the intention that you're going to want to propose. So the rationale behind it is that uh, similar to the way it is currently and without doing more work to the existing granite that's there, yeah. is uh, go in the other direction. Please. Oh, actually, that's fine. Keep going, keep going. Keep going a little more. So this is existing right here. So oh, uh, right. go back to the plan, please. Okay, right. So right there. So existing wise, um, the currently it's just slopes down to one location, and so we're keeping it kind of the exact same as what it is right now. We're just 
renovating it so that it's in better shape than it currently is right now. Uh, I hear you. Okay, but but you need to bring it up to code. And if I'm looking at um, two of the four corners, the Odeon uh, has a uh, tele uh, excuse me a lamp post and a trash can in the um, where they really where where there would be a curb cut for the uh, crosswalk. But um, the opposite corner from yours, and then the diagonal corner both have curb uh handicap ramp uh curb curb ramps excuse, excuse me um that are not at the corner they are um how do I want to say this uh you know they're 90 degrees from each other uh facing the 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 um uh the crosswalk um so i think you're going to going to want to take a look at that and and i mean again that's not a landmarks things per se except that you're in a landmark district and we really don't want to be directing people to the center of a very busy intersection. Thank you. So Jason, is, is our only problem <clears throat> throwing away existing granite for no good reason? Well, I mean, I, I guess besides that, just like make a, a really big asterisk note, like this is an extremely complicated project that, you know, takes, you know, we don't want to be the people reviewing all the minutia details, but this is something to orchestrate uh, uh, all the sidewalk work. And I hope that they're up to the task. I'm sure they, they, I'm, you know, I just hope that because it's a big one. And, and I, I, and I don't, and I guess uh, I also don't like the, and we, we talked about the granite step being removed. It'd be nice to not have that happen. Um, and I didn't ask if there were any like, um, what do they, we call them? Sidewalk vault lights that were uncovered when you looked under some of the concrete areas, or did that come up? So, so Jason, Jason, I, I think this is a very clear uh, situation where we should reject what's being presented, ask them to consider our opinion, and come back next month. Because you're right. I mean. This is a very, very important application, and it's complicated. I'm I'm for that. I agree with Roger 100%. All right, so that's what we'll do. Come back. I agree as well. <clears throat> but may I ask what we are just, I mean, I know it's complicated, and all, there, all that we don't like is the fact that on the one side, they are, Proposing to remove the existing granite. Why can't we just say, um, you know, we will approve this if they keep the existing granite on that street. May I answer that question? Yes, please. First of all, uh, first of all, I think if everyone is disengaged on the minutia of what he presented, you should make a site visit. It's hard to explain this corner. It it borders on unique. It is. Uh, Unbelievably original, and some of that originality is complex in today's world. Yes, it's slippery. It's sloping concrete, uh, sloping granite from the industrial era designed for a specific reason. But it's a museum piece of why Tribeca was designated a landmark. And so what I'm seeing in this in this uh application is a very complex but piecemeal a response to what they wish to be done. Yes, that granite, that granite should not and cannot be removed. And it, there shouldn't be a it shouldn't be cut away on the uh on the northern edge, that's for sure. But that's a huge part of this application, even though you you can't see it from the, the plan. And there are other little things I don't know what the totality of this will look like. I do know that just one little incidental, it's a gorgeous, ancient, by by United States standards, carved granite step. Why would you remove that? Uh, especially since the others are sort of designed to mimic that shape. So, so I would suggest a site visit, so, visit and that we yeah, lay so this exactly. over. Exactly, Vicky, Jason, you know, back in the old days of Bruce and I, what we would do is we would ask applicants of a complex project to meet us on site 
with their plans so we could walk through every yeah. little detail. And I hope the applicant is prepared to do that because we know they want to do the right thing and we're here to help you, but we need to work together. I would love to do that. I, uh, fan of the big zoom calls, but I like being in person even more. So that'd be great. Mm -hmm. One needs to remember that, as Bruce says, that corner, that corner is extremely special. And if you can think before we meet with you, how you can use the, the, the significant investment you're making in the new granite going along Thomas to, to, to use the corners where you're putting in concrete. And we know about ADA, but you can do ADA with, with granite as well. I mean, you could become a real you know, record of what to do in this very important part of the historic district. So, so can we do a meeting uh, ASAP? Because some of us go away for this, uh, um, you know, president. Well, when's the hearing? When, 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 when is the LPC hearing? <laughs> I don't have one scheduled. I'm working with you guys right now. So vacation. Jason will still be here. When you yeah, come March. Back. Okay. So 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 <laughs> well, I love this corner too. Um so so, let's just sit a date and, and Yeah, okay. So who's gonna work on that? Is that a who how do we orchestrate that? And then let's just do that. Well, let's we'll okay. see well, the, the applicant in the office. Right. Okay, so then should we just no vote? Yeah. Well, yeah, I think the applicant should say you want to withdraw the application so we can work with you to approve this. Thank I go very much. I until that. March, not withdraw. So let's I'm do sorry, that. Lucy, what'd you say, Lucy? I understand it's a, pro a postponement till March, not a withdrawal. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Right. So we need yeah. a resolution yeah. that the applicant says they postpone till March and send that to LPC so that there's no opportunity for misunderstanding with LPC. Okay, so Andrew, will you place that in writing for us? And in addition, give me a few dates of when you're available to do a walkthrough, and I'll submit it to the committee. That's more with your help. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Okay. Is there anything else? That's no. great. Thank you. Thank I'd you, like to Andrew. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. So we're we're done, right, guys? Well, uh, may, may I raise <clears throat> uh, some new business, <clears throat> Jason? Briefly. Yes. Yes. So, you know, Chris Mart has been um, appointed to be on the uh, Landmarks Committee of the City Council. And I've been working with Chris and his staff. And I think uh, uh, we on Community Board One should next month uh, consider who we think should be the new Landmarks Preservation Commission. Um, and I think we should do a resolution on asking Mayor Adams to appoint or remove existing out-of-term commissioners who okay. were all hanging around to approve 250 water. And I think we should have a resolution that says, in our opinion, the LPC commission commissioner should be one of the following, because we have an opportunity here, and I've been working with Chris's office and Chris, that as you know, one of the more experienced council members uh, that we could really start getting back to where we used to be as a community board and the influence over LPC, because sadly, Bruce and I have seen that diminish over the last 20 years, and it's appalling. And I really think that we should help Chris and have a community board resolution, but I think we should all go away, think about it, and consider it at the next meeting, because then he's not going to Adams isn't going to appoint a commissioner over the next month, but I think getting our seat at the table with Chris um, would be a smart thing. Thank you. I'm for that. Definitely want to be there. Okay, so mm -hmm. I'll place that on the March agenda as a discussion slash possible resolution. Great. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Vicky. Thank you, Roger. Great Thank point. You. Thanks, Roger. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, Roger. Thanks, Roger. Roger's asking hey, to move.
when you were when, when you were on the bottom and it says mute stop video share and the next to it there's a little happy face if you click on that a happy face yeah it says reactions and when you click on that it tells you to raise your hand or applaud or whatever it's a little it's a little round thing oh no silly little face and it has okay recognize hand oh i see okay okay i got it's very different from uh zoom but thank you now i get it yeah and thank on you. the top it says raise your hand and then if you press it again right raise my hand then you press it again lower your hand and then you can have other comments if you would like i see thank you so much i i, I this is so regimental web webinar it's so serious and oh, that stupid little happy face i thought it was like a virus <laughs> it's just, it's so anomalous for the rest of this program <laughs> I'm watching beer I live, they're laughing. Yes, there you go. No, it's okay. If someone showed me too, and so now we know. There you go. By, by the way, Lucy did a Lucy, you did a great job. That was tough. Yes. Oh you. yeah. That Thank, was amazing. Thank you guys. Thanks. Thanks. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good seeing you. Bye, everyone. Good night. Roger. Thank you. Thank you. Thank All right. You, bye yeah, bye. Let's all have a dinner. We used to have dinners and drinks and things. Let's have dinner and drinks. I'm <laughs>